So we're back once again. It's once again it's Brad and Alex, or Alex and Brad, and uh, Alex is doing the typing and um, and and explaining what he's doing as he goes. And uh, what we're doing now is uh, writing a subsystem that represents the drivetrain on our robot. And we kind of saved this for last. It's a, it's uh, ever so slightly more complicated than the others, um, but as you'll see, it's really uh, um, pretty similar to everything else we've been doing. So once again. This is a PID subsystem, the drivetrain, and and, you, and so normally you might use encoders for the PID subsystem. In this case, we're using this uh, ultrasonic rangefinder that you saw on the GearsBot, um, because what that's letting us do is drive a fixed distance um, from that box, so we know where we are, so we can um, uh, deliver the soda can and also back away after we've uh, delivered it, and and know when to stop. So again, it's the same deal. We put in the PID constants. Um, and now, rather than using um, Jaguars, which is what we've been doing before, um, we're using a, a higher level object called a robot drive object. And the way this thing works is that you, you uh, create a robot drive object and you give it the left and the right motor channels, okay, for the two, and, and it defaults to using Jaguars. You can also use vectors or, or well, or vectors. Um, and, and what happens here is that once you've defined the robot drive object, which we're calling drive, um, then, then what it's going to do is it's going to keep track of those motors, and once it knows about the motors, it can do lots of stuff for you. Oh, you may have a four-motor uh, drive robot. In that case, you just list all four motors there instead of the left and right ones like we did. Um, our uh, rangefinder is a uh, Max Botics rangefinder, um, and so that has an analog output, so it makes a voltage that's proportional or not or related to the distance. Um, we don't really care what the relationship is because we're only looking for one distance in our case or two distances. So we just kind of measured what those were, and we don't have to actually calculate what the distance is. But you know, you could probably do that also. So so there's the analog channel for the rangefinder. So the next thing is with the drivetrain. By default, we want to drive with joysticks. So we're not going to enable PID. PID is going to be disabled by default, and we are going to set a default command, which will be drive with joysticks. So that means when this isn't doing anything else, it's going to be listening to your joysticks. Um, if when it's not doing any other commands which require the drivetrain, then it's going to be uh, doing a command which uh, uses the joysticks to drive it, which we haven't written yet, so that's why it's, it's showing that as an error. But we'll, we'll be writing that in just a minute. So then, for again, we have to set up the PID input and output. So the PID input is the range finder, and we get the voltage of that. The how we're going to drive is gonna it's how far away we are. So we're just driving when we doing PID. We're driving forward and back. There's no turning involved. So we're gonna we're gonna tank drive, and we're gonna set the same value to both sides of the motor. So, oh, drive that tank drive. No, we we're writing a tank drive function. Oh, we're writing a tank drive function. Oh, sorry. Because it should be, it's basically private. Oh, see how he's um, Alex is making these things private. In general, um, uh, uh, variables or, or sensors or motors or something like that that which you're which you only want to use inside of a single class generally should be declared private. Um, it's a little complicated to explain why that, why it is the case that you want to do that, but it makes debugging your program uh, later on much easier. If you know that that, um, that robot drive object and the analog channel object can't be accessed from outside of this class. It also makes making changes easier if you decided to bypass the robot drive to do something fancy with your drivetrain. Um, so, okay, so now we're writing the tank drive method, which okay. passes everything along. So this is really cool because you know we had that robot drive object. The the reference was called drive, and once it knows about the wheels, then um, um, all it needs to do is um, um, you just give it the you give it the uh, um, left and right values, and it just does it, and it takes care of it. There's also like an arcade drive that's part of the drive object, and there's even a uh, holonomic drive that's part of the drive object. So if you gave it four uh, mechanism wheels, 
four mechan if you have, you have your four motors which control four mechan wheels, you can even just do you can do a holonomic driving, which is like really impressive. And then the software is all built into the robot drive object, so you don't have to actually come up with all those um, algorithms yourself. Okay, so now again we have to add it to command base before we can use it in the commands. So. Oh, still haven't got around to fixing that. Oh, again, yeah, public uh, constructor. Have to remember that. I'll write that down. I'll fix it tonight. Okay. It'll be fixed tonight. So <coughs> then we can create a new command. So the first command we'll create is drive with joysticks at a full command. So this is just going to be a command just like all the others that uh, uses the joysticks for driving. And uh, so that's pretty nice. Very easy to do. This is what you normally do during teleop. So, so when you're writing your, like you say, your autonomous program, uh, you can't be using the joysticks for driving. Well, maybe, or, or you know, if it's a hybrid mode uh, thing and you want to use the connect stick, you could use that. But, but generally, you can't use the joysticks for driving. And, and so um, you would be having some other command driving the robot around, and it would be using the drive base. But as soon as it's finished, um, and that command is finished, and so your time is part of the program is finished, then it goes back to doing the default command for the drivetrain, which is drive with joysticks. And that would, that would uh, come into effect um, it was certainly by the end of autonomous. So these methods don't exist yet, but we're going to get the left and right speed from the OI, which we'll get from the joystick for normal tank drive. So again, the reason we can just write OI dot something um, is because OI is part of command base, and all these commands are su um, subclass command base. Right. So the other thing is, it's times false is finished because it's a default command, so it's always running when another command isn't. So the way this ends is not by the is finished method. It ends because something else kicks it out because there's because one of the other things that uses the drivetrain would um, um, would would finish, and then this would come back. So now let's add get left and get right speed to the OI. So we just use the joystick object that we've already created, and it has a get Y. which lets us get the Y value. Which, and we're actually using a Logitech joystick that has two separate sticks on it that we're going to be using. So the right stick is a little weird. And we'll show you that in the video. But it's basically just another axis. So. This is a, uh, a game pad, not two joysticks. So, so if you just had two joysticks, then you wouldn't have to go through this weirdness. Um, you just do get Y on each joystick and it would work. Um, but since we're since um, it's the Logitech gamepad, it's a single device that has multiple joysticks on it, we have to do this get raw um, access thing. So, and then if we go here, it just needs to add the right import. And, and then the errors go away? Because now it imports the drive with joysticks command? So now that's all you need to do driving with joysticks. But as doing an autonomous, we want to drive a fixed distance towards the table or box. So we're going to create a new command for that, which will be drive to distance. So driving to distance requires the drive train. Oh, yeah, I think you're missing an E. Where? Oh, yeah, drive. Drive train. Oh, I'm getting there. You would have seen that. I will be a master of QWERTY by the end of this. But, so, we're going to take a set point again because we want to allow 
flexibility in what set point we want. So, if all this code starts looking the same, it's because it is. And and so the nice thing is that once you learn how to do this, you just keep doing the same thing over and over again. And uh, so your programs are like really really simple to write. So that's kind of a good feature. So now we want to set the set point of the drive train. So remember, this is this drive to distance thing is a command that would run when you're not using the joysticks and you're giving it a distance to drive to. That's the set point, um, and it's a it's a value from the ultrasonic range finder, and it just uses PID control um, it's to to drive there. So we're just enabling it, and it's taken off. It's important to remember we're enabling it because by default on this subsystem, PID is not enabled. It's only enabled for this command in this case. When we execute, we do nothing because PID will be running in the background. And again, we just need to set our tolerance. So the error um, that we're, that we're uh, using in the PID controller is the uh, position minus the current set point. Um, so by calling the get position method on the drivetrain, and we're using uh, two, two hundredths. Here is the error. Now here's something that's a little bit different than, than we've done before. Um, you need, when the command is over, when it's finished, it, when a command is finished, um, it calls its end method. And what the idea is of the end method is you can put something in there that um, helps you uh, clean up the uh, command. So when it, when it reaches the set point, within, or within two hundredths of the set point, then is finished will return true and then it will, um, uh, the command will finish, and then it will call the end method. And this is where we can clean something up. And so what we're doing is we're disabling the drivetrain. So we're stopping it because um, um, we, don't want it, we, we don't want it to keep moving. And we're disabling the PID loop on the drivetrain because we don't want the thing to keep driving and keeping the joysticks from operating. Yeah, well, you try to drive, it would just have to drive, and then it would jerk and drive back into position. Because it's the PID controller was always trying to get it to be some distance away. That was that set point. And as soon as he drove with the joysticks, it would go, oh, I'm not at the set point anymore. I better go back. And the PID controller would keep uh, trying to keep you in the position. And it would be fighting the joysticks. So um, in the case of end, we just put that in there. So when the command ends, it will uh, disable the PID controller. And, and then this other method called interrupted is called when another command interrupts this one. Now, in, our, in this particular program, it's unlikely that that's going to happen because we don't have anything else that's using the uh, drive. A second drive to distance would, if you said drive to distance 0.11, and then you're like, oh, by the way, I have another button set to drive 0.2. It would do. It would interrupt it. Yeah. But we're not doing that in this program, so the interrupted method won't get called. But if, if a command is bumped out because it's interrupted or canceled, then it will uh, call the interrupted method, and then... Um, uh, and then, so again, we have to clean up in that case, and we have to disable the PID controller. Is that it? Yep, that's it. Oh, that's it for this. So the next video will be kind of like the last one in this uh, sequence where we're going to show you how to make all this stuff work um, yeah. autonomously and add one more really cool command. Well, actually, one more thing before we oh, do Oh, one this. more thing? We should add it to the OI so that we can test it. Oh, yes. Okay. So we're going to test it so that we know that it actually works. So we just go here. Again, we can just rebind these buttons. We don't have to create new buttons. And we're going to try 0.11. And so we're just taking button one and button two just to verify that the command works. And um, we're, using uh, we're just using them again this time just to drive to some distance. Um, if you have more buttons, you can put as many you, know, you can put commands on every button you've got. And in fact, if you have like the Cypress module, the, the extended I.O. module, then you get lots and lots of buttons you can create and you can fill them all up with commands um, if you make your own controller. And by the way, if that's not enough, if you use the smart dashboard and you write commands to the smart dashboard, on the screen you'll see like a cancel button and a start button and you can press those to run commands. So you don't even have to keep making, t uh, binding them to physical buttons. You can just bind them to uh, buttons that show up in the user interface on the smart dashboard. You can just press them, and it will run these commands the same way. And you can also subclass button if you want to make, like, get really fancy and have buttons that only happen, say, if you have collected less than three balls at this current time, 
or some other wacky condition that you want a button to trigger at. So maybe we'll do another video about about uh, uh, fancy stuff yeah. later. Okay. So uh, we will see you in the last video in the series, uh, which is actually the one you really want to see because it shows you how to make an autonomous program um, in uh, only a few lines of code from what yep. we have. Yep. Okay. To it, and we can back up. We can drive close and back up. It is worth noting, however, that the joystick, since it's a default command, does not interrupt the command. I have no joystick control until it is done. And now I have joystick control. So it is important to note that joysticks do not interrupt the uh, autonomous commands if you're using them to tell you all. And that's all that really is to the drivetrain.